Hi there! Today we are going to talk about a really important subject for me as I switch from Nikon to the Elmont Aliens. So let's see that right now. Welcome back! I'm Didier Moulin from Didier Moulin Photography in France. I'm a based uh, portrait photographer mainly, corporate and, uh, and portrait photographer. Um, I want to address the subject is how did I get to the Elmont uh, system and uh, why? Uh, you know, I'm an Nikon guy, I have this D3S that I love, I love the quality out of that, but one day I was mad of carrying all this stuff uh, with me. So then I bought this TL2. The TL2 is a full touchscreen uh, operation. It has one button and two dials that are perfectly customizable. It renders wonderful images and it is just fast enough for me for what I do with, when I live on vacation or when I am in the streets. Paired with the 18mm on, on it, it gives me a 28mm focal equivalent. And this is perfect for going out, street photography, reportage, and uh, uh, pictures of the daily, uh, daily life. So that, that was perf perfect for that. So yeah, this was my first step in the Leica and the Elmont aliens, without knowing at this moment that it was an Elmont. And for sure it was easier to bring that in vacation than to bring this. I think you would agree with me. So after that, the second step was that I wanted to see how it was to work with M uh, lenses, at least manual lenses. And I wanted more reach than just the 18 mm and uh, so I, I found a 7 Artisan 55 mm 1.4 TL mount, so it was originally natively an L mount in fact, so I didn't need to buy any adapter for that. So I tried the 55 on this and I would say in terms of um, joy to play with the manual lens, yes, perfect, it gave me this uh, feeling of taking the time to take the picture, uh, be sure you are in focus, make the good framing and so on, wait until you see the subject going into the, the frame and uh, okay, you have to anticipate and know what you want to do and uh, that worked perfectly. In terms of image quality, the 7 Artisan is, uh, is not that good, I mean, you, at 1.4 you have a lot of purple fringing, it's not really sharp, you need to close the, the, the aperture to get something sharp. And so far for this reason, I wanted to, to, to go in a higher quality because I went from the D850 with very uh, high quality lenses. So I didn't want to sacrifice uh, any quality in the rendering of my images, even if I was in vacation. So the next step was uh, to reach M lenses. And then I started to, to look after used market M lenses. Yes, because all the gear I buy, except some of them, I buy them on a the used market. And I will make a video on that to show you the interest uh, of this uh, way of working. And I found a 24 Elmar M uh, lens. It's f3.8. So this 24 Elmar is just a genuine piece of glass without any default. I mean, in terms of uh, sharpness, of uh, respect of the curvature, uh, you don't see any uh, uh, curves that are uh, doing this uh, in the field. The, line, the straight lines uh, keep on going straight in, uh, in the image. It's very, very nice uh, when you use that. 
So the good thing with the Leica TL2 is that uh, as this uh, lens is a 6-bit coded and the adapter is a Leica one, so it reads the code of uh, the lens and the information are in the EXIF uh, data of the picture. So you know uh, when you are working on the picture on your Lightroom, you know that it was the LMR 24mm and so on. You don't know the aperture that you set because there is no link uh, between the aperture ring here and the, the camera. So you don't know at what aperture you took the picture. But at least you have the information of the lens that you are using in Lightroom. So the good thing also with the TL2 is that you can manual focus with activating the, the assistance. So you have a zoom and a peaking. So it helps you to make the focus. Then you know the story, you have this uh, 35mm and then you equivalent and then you want more reach. So I've been looking for something new because I'm like that. And I uh, succeeded in negotiating a uh, Semilux 35 uh, that came also with a uh, Leica M8. So it's a silver uh, version that means that the barrel is in brass so it's much heavier than a black version. But I love this, uh, this color to match with the TL2. And to work with that, I started to need something that is uh, um, mandatory on the TL2 to, to be able to make your focus. EVF, uh, Visoflex from Leica, that you put on the TL2 like this. It's the same that is done for the Leica M10. And this Visoflex has this uh, advantage to be tilting like this, so you can be also doing like that to make the focus. Using this with the 35, then it brought uh, a new... Uh, you have more confidence in what you do, and you, you, you can trust more the, 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 the way you make the focus. So uh, let's see uh, some examples that I did uh, with this 35 on the TL2. As you can see, this 35mm is just amazing, even wide open or uh, when you close it. And you know, the TL2 is a crop factor and this is where I wanted to use the full range of the lens and not the crop uh, part of it. And I started to look at uh, full frame L mount so I can mount the uh, my M lenses using the adapter on an L mount. And it's at this point that I discovered, in fact, that the TL2 is an L mount. Um, I looked at the Leica SL, but the SL has the same limitation as the TL2 when it is about uh, zooming into the frame at the point you want to make the focus. Let me explain. When you are using the TL2, if you when you activate the zoom, it's zooms into the center of the frame and in this uh, area then you can make your focus uh, using either the back screen or the, the EVF and once you're okay you just half press the shutter button and it goes back to the, the full view of the, the lens and then you frame and this is uh, okay for the TL2 I, uh, I accept that because it's it's not a professional camera and I go uh, take pictures in the streets for myself or on vacation. Okay, but for a professional camera that would replace my D850 at this moment, I didn't want this uh, slow down process where to help make the focus. You, before you, you make the focus, you have to look at the point you want to make the focus in the middle of the frame, activate the zoom, make the focus, and then compose your frame. This is not possible. So the SL, 
uh, wasn't uh, the solution for me. Offshore, I found the SL2 uh, and I remember that I was invited in, uh, in the store in Tour for a presentation of the SL2 before it was launched on the market. And oh my God, yes, it's a wonderful camera. It's a piece of art. Uh, it really, it's a gem of design product. Uh, when you see the, the EVF, it's just wonderful. Uh, nothing to say about that. But, um, well, it was too expensive and so I discovered at this moment the Lumix S1 series, the S1 and S1R. And this is all they arrived uh, in my uh, gear, in fact. I started with the S1, that was my full frame L-mount camera. It was also on a used market, a brand uh, in a mint condition. and. What made me select the S1 over the SL, for instance, because they are both 24 megapixels, is first the S1 uh, solves this issue regarding the focus. In the S1, you can use the joystick, place where you want to make the focus, activate the zoom, and it will zoom in this area. You make the focus, you go out, but you, you didn't change the framing. So that's the first point. Second point is over the SL, the S1 has the same EVF as the S1R and the SL2. So you have a much more definition into the EVF. You have image stabilization inside the body, uh, in the contrary of the Leica SL. You have a tilting screen as well, as the Leica SL doesn't have. So I took this one, SL uh, S1. That is uh, the camera I am filming on my video since I have it. And it's the point where I st started to make my uh, YouTube channel. So it was on the Lumix S1. When I got used on working with the S1 and um, the customization of the menu and when I appre finally appreciated all the functionality you have in it and I took confidence in the fact that it could replace my Nikon uh, gear then it's where the S1R came at the beginning of this year. I will make a video about the S1 and S1R customization of the menu because it's very, very powerful. You know what? You can be working with the eyes in the viewfinder and never leave the viewfinder and just use the button to make all your uh, settings and change without uh, getting away from the viewfinder and going into the menu. So I will make a video for that to explain this configuration. So it's a workhouse body made of last decades uh, improvements in all specs. You, if you are like me, familiar with the big DSLR, you will not be disappointed and you will not be lost because you will find everything you need on all the buttons that you have on this body. The fact that it's an hybrid system like the Nikon Z series or Canon or Sony uh, allows you to mount a lot of uh, lenses, uh, whatever the brand they are. And as I was telling you, you can mount uh, Nikon lenses. So look, for instance, I have this 14 to 24, you know, this lens from Nikon that is uh, very well known for it's uh, uh, very powerful uh, image rendering and I found a Metabones adapter and the particularity of this adapter is that you have a ring here that will change the aperture of the G lens series because the G lenses on the Nikon don't have the aperture ring so the only way to change the aperture is to to move this little uh, bracket. And when you mount this lens on the Metabon adapter, when you turn this, you can change the aperture of the lens and then you can mount it on your uh, L-mount body, either it's uh, Leica or uh, Lumix. And here I'm back with a 14 to 24 f2.8 on which I can uh, change the aperture. The good thing is uh, there is no click in the aperture so you can use it for video for instance this Metabon uh, adapter and so now I have I can have my uh, 24 uh, or 14 uh, lens 
uh, but I had uh, a lot of fun with on the Nikon and I will use it uh, on the S1 or the S1R uh, with the same uh, philosophy and with a, such a wide angle lens if you don't have autofocus it's not the end of the life I mean you, you can deal with it and manually focus very easily using this, this lens too. So, to sum up at this level of the video, TL2 to go light on vacation and with very powerful image quality. 24, 35, 50 millimeter uh, with M adapter to L, perfect. S1, S1R, uh, very powerful bodies for professional work. S1, more dedicated to video or low light situation like the D3S. S1R more dedicated to still pictures like the Nikon D3X when it uh, was launched a few years ago. The result of the M lenses on the S1 and S1R body, this is where the Leica T, uh, SL2 is, uh, is made uh, in a better way because the sensor of the SL2 has something specific on, uh, on a certain layer with micro lenses that will uh, correct mostly the border of the, 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 the sensor, the frame, and to correct uh, the default uh, that you will see uh, if you are working with the S1 or the S1R. This is for the wide angle lenses. So with the 24 mm when I mount it on the S1R or the, or on the S1, I see on the border of the frame that it is not sharp. Uh, there is default, something is appearing in this, in this uh, area. So definitely, if you are more a wide-angle shooter with M lenses, then the SL2 is the solution. Don't take the S1 or the S1R because the sensors are not optimized to work with M lenses, wide-angle M lenses. But as soon as you take the 35, 50 and whatever, with the 35, you can have very good results on this body. And let me show you some examples right now. Took with the 35 and to help me make these uh, pictures in the street while it was uh, the night, I use uh, Profoto C1 Plus. Which How did you find these pictures? Tell me uh, in the comment below, please. But definitely, the purpose of the L mount is the SL line of uh, incredibly well-designed and optically defined lenses. They define the new reference of, uh, of the, the, the different focal lengths. All the new Apo Sumicron uh, SL lenses are just incredible. The 35, the day I can put my hands on it on the used market, definitely I will not hesitate. The 50, uh, I will hesitate between 35 or 50. But even the 50 Semilux, that was one of the first L lenses, SL lenses that uh, Leica launched at when they launched the Leica SL is just amazing in terms of sharpness and rendering and smoothness of the background and so on and so forth. You know that you can see a lot of videos, pictures on flickers and so on about this Sumilux 50mm SL. See for yourself uh, on the internet and me as a portrait photographer, the first one that I took is a 90 on the used market as well and I made a video about that so just look at this video if you want to to see some amazing picture but just for yourself 
Let's see a few pictures taken with this one right now. You guys love these pictures as well so briefly the L mount the goal for me was to get L lenses otherwise if you buy an uh, uh, Lumix S1 or S1R and that you will put Sigma lenses on that I would I would not recommend this mount because the weakness of the S bodies is that they are not very good at autofocus and if you just plan to to reach uh, sigma lenses so then don't look at uh, the elements aliens and go to sony or nikon or canon uh, hybrid system and uh, buy the sigma that are made also for these mounts and you will get very powerful face detection autofocus in the contrary of the the s1 that are only contrast based uh, autofocus they are making improvement and we have seen that on the s5 uh, it seems that the autofocus is far better than, than the this one and i hope that they will upgrade the firmware of this body for better autofocus but okay if if you buy an l mount for me the purpose is to get l uh, l uh, lenses from leica so take the time, find some on the used market. There are not many often, but you can find one. My first was the 90mm, like I said. So, yes, as you have understood, I am now a L mount guy. And this gives me flexibility because I can use ever SL, M, Nikon, whatever lens on the system, but the goal for me is to use L uh, lenses from uh, Leica. But this gives me the flexibility to pick up the, 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 the lens I like the most. This gives me also reliability because it's a complete coherent system. I have this APS-C uh, on this side, I have the full frame, this is small, can bring it with me, but uh, when I want I can put on this one, I can put the 90mm, and this gives me a 135mm f2, um, so in terms of reliability, uh, also you can know, you know that there are a lot of investment uh, on Leica side, on Sigma, on uh, Lumix, so you can rely it in the future, on it in the future. This also gives me a great ergonomics and productivity for my professional uh, assignments because when I take this body, I don't feel lost and I, I have access all, to all the function I need when I am on a professional assignment. So this is very powerful. Then the element gives me the interchangeability because like I said, I have my TL2 and I can switch from another one to the other one, switching the lenses and apply the crop factor of the TL2. And I make a video also on why I kept the TL2 among the GR3 uh, Ricoh or the Fuji uh, X100V. I make a video for that to explain my choice to keep this one for street photography. And last but not least, and I would say most overall, the Leica, the, the L-mount uh, gives you the high quality glasses of Leica that put the, the new level of references for the rendering. You have stunning images with very 
pleasing softness where you need it and with incredible sharpness where it is requested with a unique way to make the transition between what is sharp and what is not and you saw you also have this kind of vibration when you use these lenses and you see the results there there is something as soon as you put the, the eyes on the viewfinder there is something different when you use these lenses so hope you guys have appreciated this video and uh, the pictures that I show because the, the, the main most important thing for me is the pictures and not the material but it was important to show you and explain you what is the L mount what does this offer to you in terms of flexibility and so on and also uh, but the, 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 the goal for me is to take pictures at the end and to have very nice picture pleasing picture for me and for my customers so if you have any questions about that, don't hesitate uh, to write and send me a message below. Subscribe to the channel, of course, it will help me uh, to grow uh, on this channel. And I have to apologize for the long time since I didn't make any video because this year was a particular year. I think we can all agree on, on this. And I was just wondering and asking to myself, is it relevant to make videos about uh, a gear and photography where you see that uh, most people are in such difficulty that also I thought that yes people need to see something pleasing so that's why I continue making my video and sharing with you my pictures so I hope you like that and see you soon goodbye